First thing we're going to do is finish the lecture on repeated eigenvalues. Before the break, we talked about what happens when you have only one eigenvalue and one eigenvector. Today, we're going to take care of some other cases. The first case I want to talk about is one eigenvalue and two different eigenvectors. Uh, this is actually a very special case. This will only happen when the matrix for the system is of the following form. A, 0, 0, A. When the matrix looks exactly like that, where we have constants along the diagonal terms, then A is the eigenvalue, and all vectors are eigenvectors. And in that case, our solutions will look like this. Y is going to look like uh, some constant, k1, times e to the at, where that a is the same a in the matrix, times the vector 1, 0, plus k2 times e to the at times the vector 0, 1. Or, alternatively, we just write e to the at times the vector which gives the initial condition. Then when you plug in t equals 0, you'll have exactly your initial condition. Okay, so that's what happens when we have one eigenvalue and two different eigenvectors. Now, let's take a look at what happens when we have lambda equals 0 as an eigenvalue. When lambda equals 0 is an eigenvalue, that means that the matrix A is singular, which is the same thing as having a non-trivial equilibrium solutions. So, for example, if we have lambda 1, the first eigenvalue being 0, and lambda 2, the second eigenvalue being some constant, let's say c, and then v1 will be the eigenvector going along with lambda 1, and v2 will be the eigenvector going along with v2, then our solutions are going to look like the following thing in the phase plane. There's my x and y axis. I am going to have a line of equilibrium solutions where the slope of this line is given by v1. And along this line, I have a series of equilibrium solutions. Then, what I'm also going to have is all other solutions are going to be on lines with slope v2. And depending on the sine of lambda, they're all going to either drift towards the equilibrium solution or away from the equilibrium solution. Okay. 
If lambda 2 is positive, they're going to move away from the equilibrium solution. If lambda 2 is negative, they will leave, go towards. And the slopes on these other lines that I've drawn here will have slope equal to the vector v2. We'll do an example of these shortly.